Hi, this is Carol Harnett with another One Take Work Love Play daily video blog. And this video blog post is in follow-up to one that I did in July by the name of Should We Give Employees What They Want. Spurred on by that, that uh, video blog post, I wrote a new employee benefits column for HR Executive and for FCC regs, I must comment that HR Executive is a client and they hire and pay me to write that column. That said, the column went up on uh, Monday, a couple days ago, and it's gotten a lot of interesting and diverse pickup and commentary, everything from VC and angel investors to HR folks to benefit folks. And I wanted to address and, and elaborate on some of the things I just didn't have the word room to write in the column and the thoughts I've had since. And the, what I'd like to do in this post is differentiate among a couple of ideas. The idea of core benefits, ancillary benefits, and perks, first of all, like what are the difference among those things, and what are the different ways to offer one, two, or all three. And one of the comments, a very good comment that uh, was posted today on the LinkedIn group the HR Executive Online hosts was, uh, isn't a way to handle this idea of core benefits, what we really think people need, versus ancillary benefits, what they might want, isn't a really good way to handle that cafeteria benefits. And that's a great comment. I worked for an employer, actually a couple, who have had a cafeteria benefit plans. And for those who might not be familiar, maybe from the non-HR and benefits world, in a cafeteria plan, the employer will offer an array of benefits um, and they provide usually a bolus of money that you can then distribute the way you want and you can pick and choose your benefits. Um, and that can work very well. Um, I know the way my employer initially did cafeteria benefits was that they actually um, paid for a core on what they thought were the most important. So for example, they initially paid for the complete premium for the most basic of the medical plans, the most, um, the middle ground actually on disability, a 60% income replacement ratio, and for one time salary on life insurance. And that became their core benefit. As health expenses became, or premiums became more and more expensive, they then um, just actually gave you a, a, a set amount of money. It didn't cover anything 100% anymore. And you had to choose among that. And, and included in that would be things that we think are really important for employers, right? Like we really think medical insurance is important. A, a lot of people believe that at least a basic life insurance policy is important, usually one-time salary. Um, and a lot of people uh, also believe um, that retirement benefits are important. And I, I, I agree with that as well. And uh, a lot of employers have, in fact, moved to a, a floor contribution model. So you, you sort of have no say that you, that you uh, won't have any kind of retirement plan. And then um, many of them have moved to what's called uh, an opt-out versus an opt-in model. So you would actively have to choose against the saving for retirement. And in the ancillary benefits, traditionally what we're thinking about are things more like um, dental insurance, vision insurance, some of the new benefits like pet insurance. Many people consider disability insurance to be an ancillary line benefit. I would tell you I think it's more of a core financial benefit, but that's just my prejudice given my background. But then there's this other concept, and it's the concept of perks. And that's what I will tell you is different about this, this idea of core benefits versus cafeteria plans and letting people choose what they want. Almost never have I seen things like local yoga classes and cool restaurants and dry cleaning services included as a benefit, an ancillary benefit. And it, it is what is called a perk, what some people actually call concierge benefits. In a lot of cases, concierge benefits have taken a significant demise, and concierge benefits are what the employer works out, so that a local dry cleaner usually comes on site a couple of times a week. Some people still do have a, a, a car wash service that comes on site a few times a week. But that vendor has to get enough um, traffic to keep that going up, and again, the employer chooses. Um, what I think was close to what the new company Benefit Works is doing around global, uh, meaning uh, global perks, perks for all, is this idea, first of all, that it's a broad way of things that are hyper-local, um, but at what it smacks up to me, the void it seems to feel is my last employer for a while, when I first joined them, had an employee club. And the employee club were these people who'd been around a while, and they just were, really had great company spirit and company culture, and they went out and they negotiated things like 10% off labor and parts at the local Saab and Volvo dealership, which just happened to be down the road. Um, the, uh, there was an auto dealing, detailing place that they got a good employee discount out, and the place would drive you to work. 
they got a featured meal at uh, the restaurant that everybody loved that was in the area. For all of the local movie theaters on Fridays, they would sell movie tickets at a discounted price. And what happened is, is the culture of the company changed and people really lost a lot of that company spirit. The employee club started to evaporate. These people were working even harder than they ever had and they just didn't want to do this anymore. So the company panicked a little bit and they took it over and they wanted to control it more and they moved to this national discount model. And you know what? People started dropping out of the employee club because you used to have to pay $25 a year to the point that the company made it free and less and less people still participated. So I think in some respects, number one, the void that um, BenefitWorks is filling is that for people who experience it, that employee club feel where the hyper-local benefits were negotiated. Um, the other thing that I think Benefits Works does that's different than that annual contribution is this idea that you can change your perks month to month, which I think is a unique idea. And I've talked to people who've used the Benefit Works platform and they say, you know, some months they do their dry cleaning and some months they, they put it toward a restaurant. And so there's this variability. So I'm still leaning toward, uh, much as one of the commenters had said, this idea of core benefits, you know, making, developing a way to make sure people get what we really know they need, at least on the health benefit side, right? And health care reform sort of taking care of that. It's going to be mandatory, we think, right? Um, but maybe, you know, something with life. I would add disability and retirement. And then maybe what we need to do is, is look at this perk idea um, as a way to actually spend less money but give people what they want which will improve company culture, which improves productivity and profitability, and makes people happy, which we also have seen drives down healthcare costs. So that's my thoughts for now. This is Carol Harnett with another One Take Work, Love, Play Daily video blog saying that I'm hoping you're experiencing some great work today, that you'll get to experience some tremendous love, and that you don't forget to play. Bye.